Uh, howdy folks. Today we're going to talk a little bit about glassware. A question came up about when to use what kind of glassware and so I decided we would just talk about uh, what glasses I have because that's a fun hobby I have is collecting glasses and Auntie Susan was kind enough to join um, and so she'll like, I don't know, ask pertinent questions or something? I'll try. Uh-huh. Uh, so where should we begin? I don't know, Pete. Why don't we just talk a little bit about the types of glasses you have and how they're used? <laughs> One of the main types of glass you really will definitely want is a double old-fashioned glass. Why do they call them that? I don't know. But these are great if, you know, for an old-fashioned, obviously, anything with a big ice cube in it, you want some nice big ones for your, you know, to put your nice clear ice cylinder in or whatever. Useful to have as well are a smaller version of the same thing. So like a, I guess a single old fashioned glass. I'm calling this a rocks glass. You would maybe put in cubes of ice or cracked ice into this to drink a whiskey out of or a, a cocktail. Also, if you were gonna serve a drink um, in a smaller glass without ice, like a Sazerac or something, you'll want like a smaller glass. A Sazerac that's, you know, a, isn't a huge drink, it's only two ounces, and if it's in a giant glass, it just it looks weird. This is our favorite glass for Sazeracs. This is my favorite Sazerac glass. It's a very ornate, carved kind of crystal glass. It's very heavy, but so a, a small drink like Sazerac, you know, goes halfway up or, or, or more, and so but it lo looks cool. It's basically useless if you're gonna put ice in it, more than one cube of ice. Yeah, yeah, so like, yeah, an ice, a couple of ice cubes will basically fill this thing up right away. And why wouldn't you serve, like, like why would you not just serve everything in these glasses? Like, what, why use something with a stem? Why use a coupe? Well, that is a good question. And the answer is, if you only got one kind of glass, I would get something like this. I would get, like, a double old-fashioned glass as, like, your first glass. Because you could serve anything in this. You could put a Manhattan in this if you wanted to. It would look a little weird, but it would be fine. Um, and you could put a big ice cube in it, and you could put crushed ice in this. You could use this for a lot of things. Um, I mean, a Manhattan would look a little weird, but whatever. So you're saying a coupe is good for a drink that isn't on the rocks and where you want the fill line to be like reasonably high up the glass and to contain all the liquid without looking silly. Right. So your other main category is a coupe. A coupe is anything that's sort of shaped like like this. It has a stem and then sort of a wide bowl. These were originally, I think, for champagne. At some point they started doing champagne in the flute. Uh, I don't know the history of this. Coupe versus flute, we don't know. We don't know, but... We don't know. Uh, like the champagne bubbles, if it's got less surface area where the liquid is, the bubbles, it will go flat less fast in a flute. This will keep the carbonation Whereas this will dissipate the carbonation. So why they ever put champagne in these, I don't know. I'll tell you why. Why? Because you can make a pyramid of these, and it looks really cool. That is true. You could make a pyramid of those. I don't have a lot of flutes. I don't drink champagne. I don't really like it. So, but I saw these, and I sort of had to have them. They're... But have you ever served I a cocktail I think that's crystal. There, do you think? Uh, I have put cocktails in this sometimes. Uh, they work pretty good. They're a pretty big. A sour actually fills this up pretty well. Anything, a champagne drink, like a French 75 or something, you could put in a Collins glass, or you could put it in a flute. Anyway, in terms so of anyway, volume that they contain, yeah. you're saying this uh, holds a lot less liquid than, for instance, this, which has got to be a 10-ounce volume glass. Yeah, this is least. probably, yeah, yeah, 8 or 10 ounces. 10, and these are typically 5 or 5 and a half. So if you have a 3-ounce drink and you, uh, you know, dilute it, and it might end up something like 4 ounces, maybe a little less... In a five ounce glass, it's you gonna know, it's nice. gonna go up close to the top, but it won't be so full that you're gonna spill it when you walk, bring it to your guest. That's one of the main things about coupes is how big are they? Because I have I found these sort of much bigger ones at the thrift store, and uh, like these aren't great for for smaller drinks. You they know, look like silly. look silly, and, but and also to compare them to old-fashioned glasses, you don't really want to put ice in them. No. Mostly because it, it'll it float, it'll hit you in the face, it makes it hard to drink, and it looks weird. People these days do it. You know, I've seen drinks with like big ice cubes in coupes, and it always 
triggers me. I don't like it. Don't put ice cubes in a coop. Do whatever you want, but I would never do that. There are no rules, but you really don't like that. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I think there's a lot of people who don't like it. Okay. So one of the main questions is like something like a sour. Mm, good question. What about sours? So you can serve a sour on ice. That is probably fine. We put sours on big rocks. You mm -hmm. can do that. You can put a sour on small cubes. That's fine. You can put a sour in a coop, and that works well, too. Um, if you're doing egg whites, you can still do it in a big ice cube. That's fine. But I found that a glass like this, which I think wouldn't technically be a coupe, I think it's some kind of a wine glass, but I don't know exactly. I, I think of them as like claret glasses. I don't know why I have that in my brain. But these are nice because instead of being so wide at the top, they're much skinnier at the top. They're thinner at the top. And so if you do an egg white drink, for one, it's got more volume. So this is a slightly bigger glass than this. So if it has more volume, you kind of want a little more room in your glass. And also, when the foam happens, it'll be this nice thicker uh, you know, layer of foam. Whereas a foam at the top of this, which is much more spread out, will be a very thin looking foam. So something like a sour with egg white looks great in one of these glasses. That's a nice trick with the foam because I know sometimes if the foam's too thin, you go to do your Ango art on it and it just like falls to pieces on you. Yeah, yeah. If, you're, yeah. if your layer of foam isn't thick enough and you try to put Ango Store bitters on top for a little design, it doesn't work that well. So these are terrific. Okay. Here's some more coupes that you have. Oh, yeah. So that's the other thing. Coupes come in a, such a, a wide variety of shapes and sizes. That this, one has an absurdly tall stem. This one is very cool. It's got like this tulip shape and it's very tall. And then I think this was one of our early and best finds, was this coupe. Yeah, so early on I found this crystal coupe, which has got this nice shape. It's pretty big, um, but if you can see the shape, the bowl of it actually curves back in, so the very top of it is thinner than the bottom of the bowl, uh, which is cool because it's harder for it to spill. A common glass you see are those sort of V-shaped martini, martini glasses. glasses from the 90s or the 80s or whatever. And I hate them because most of the liquid is at the top, right? Because of the volume at the bottom is much smaller than the volume at the top. Uh, and they're really easy to spill. As soon as you slosh it a little bit, this large volume of water has a perfect ramp just to go flying out of your glass. I hate it. And it's true that most craft cocktail bars don't use glasses that shape. Not these days. Yeah. Not these days. Yeah. And so I never use them. And it's been easy to find other alternatives for still. There are tons. Coops are available. Of other alternatives. Uh, the other one I haven't mentioned yet is a Collins glass. These come in various sizes. I only have one kind. There are they are harder to find at the thrift store. I have found. I found, had found six of these with this little bamboo pattern, which I love. I have a few different things of that. And then I've broken three so far, so we're down to three. And that might tell you why there's fewer of them at the thrift store. And that might be a clue. Yeah. Um, anyway, what do you use this for? Uh, Collins glasses for Collins. So you would, which would be like, you know, anything that's like a highball. These are also sometimes called highball glasses. So, so that means it's got fizzy water in it? Or yeah, you, yeah, so it's anything with fizzy. So rum and coke, uh, dark and stormy, or any of those things. Like a Ramos gin fizz. Uh... Well, so a fizz is slightly different. So uh, a Collins uh, highballs typically have ice. So you put ice in this and, you know, you're topping it off with soda water or something. You need, a, you know, a big tall glass. Um, you could, of course, do that in an old-fashioned, too. Of course. That would work you fine. You put anything in an old-fashioned glass. Yeah. Um, but then a fizz doesn't have ice in it, but you're still putting soda water in. So you still want a tall glass, but you typically will want a smaller one mm -hmm. because you really want that foam to kind of stick out the top like a Ramos. Mm -hmm. you, you want a but little... you don't want to be putting in so much soda water to yeah. fill up this entire glass to get your foam to So you need like cool. a juice glass for that or something. You need, like I have, I'll show you. I can't wait to see what this is going to be. This was a gift from your, ow. This was a gift from your brother. Oh, this is that, those beer glasses. This, these are, yeah, this is a beer glass you is got from someplace. Is that actually smaller? Really? It's, it's shorter smaller? and it's smaller in diameter. It's, it's just a little bit It's a little bit, bit smaller. smaller. I could probably use an even smaller one if yeah. I could find it. But, um, so those work great for... Those work great for 
drinks that have soda water in them. Yeah. Okay, so then there's like various oddball things that I don't have a lot of and I won't discuss a ton, but I did find this amazing giant crystal snifter at the thrift store. I couldn't resist them. What would you put in there? Um, I put, I, like classically you're drinking brandy straight, but like you could put like a pina colada Anything or something on, like, like, on some, like pearlized. Anything or... with pearlized or something in the yeah. blender, like a blended yeah. margarita would just look awesome in there. But they are huge. Like this is a huge glass. So you, you could probably fit two drinks in there. Speaking of things big enough to hold two drinks. Yeah. So uh, tiki, tiki mugs. We only have this one, a Cthulhu one. It's pretty rad. But these are also huge drinks. They, you put a ton of ice in your tiki drink um, and, it, you know, they're mostly ice. So we don't have a lot of that, but if you want to make a tiki drink... You need a tiki mug. You need some kind of tiki related thing. Which is sort of what... This is another oddball one in that same bamboo pattern. But it's like a weird... Tiny uh, snifter? Weird, like... It's a tiny snifter. Wow, I wonder if no one else is coming. Oh my god, Pete, that's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but then the same the same pattern I also have this kind of also classic tiny. snifter yeah. these work great for tropical drinks uh, much much smaller than this wacky crystal one I've got speaking of tropical drinks I found this little guy found There's, a few of those I think. yeah they, I, I think these are probably thought of as like water glasses they're pretty good for filling up with crushed ice or pearl ice or blended drinks they work great for stuff like that. These are super fun to have. It's just like tiny cordial glasses. Like if you're just gonna sip a little Amaro or uh, I don't know, just taste spirits just for fun or little after dinner shots or whatever. And these are all like really nice crystal glasses. These are patterns super and... cool yeah. crystal yeah, patterns. The thing you'll see a lot of people have are these and they're called Glen Carnes. They like sort of focus the the aromas coming out get sort of focused into this little chimney and so you can really get the concentrated aromas if you're trying to detect what this spirit tastes like and that's traditional for whiskey but you can of course do gin or rum rum aquavit whatever mm. around here for rum we like to use these little ceramic cups for no reason really just we have them tradition i guess and then then there's mezcal Mezcal, uh, a lot of the time you'll see in these little, like if you go to a Catholic church and you're gonna light a candle for Vote somebody. candle holder? Yeah, it has these little, it's like a little tea light candle holder, but they use them to drink uh, mezcal out of. So these are kind of cool to have. When we went to Mexico, we got a bunch of these uh, on our tour. They were sort of just giving them away. Yeah. And we also bought these little ceramic Cup. That's kind of fun for mezcal. Those are called a copita. A copita, yeah. yeah. And if they're sort of unfinished on the inside. They, they lend a kind of a funny flavor, I think, sometimes. And then there's also these glazed little copitas that a lot of people use. This is a small one. This is for, like, samples. Yeah. And it's, it's easy to spill out of these, too. You have to be careful when you're drinking out of those. There's a type of glass we do not have mm -hmm. that you see in cocktail bars all the time. Mm -hmm. It's called... The Nick and Nora. The Nick and Nora glass. Which I believe is named for Nick and Nora from the Thin Men movies from the 30s. I believe that's correct. This is not a Nick and Nora glass, but it's the closest thing we have to one. This is sort of similar. This is, I think this is like a wine glass. I think this is a white wine glass. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick and Nora's uh, are wider at the top than the bottom. And this Just one's got bit. kind of a bowl, and it's a little bit skinnier at the top. But it's but Yeah, a Nick and Nora's just a little bit more... Yeah, it's got this kind of a slope to it. Without being like crazy martini glass B, right. it's just a little it's bit rounded. more rounded. And, yeah. They're nice. They're classy. I think about a Nick and Nora glass it. being a glass that is typically used for a drink that is served, obviously not on ice, mm -hmm. but is um, usually a stirred drink. Mm -hmm. In fact, yeah. I mean, there's... They're if, really the just, same as if a you, If you like Nick and Nora's, you can use them. I know some people put sours in Nick and Nora's, and that's fine. Just, it's course. just it all. You just have to sort of decide what you like. It's all about the presentation, and you just have to decide how you want to present this drink or that drink, and what looks the coolest. Because you're just drinking it, and in the end, it doesn't really matter. I know it's really as, important. As long as the drink fits in the glass, the drink has to fit, and the glass mm -hmm. has to not have a hole in it. Yes, except at the top. 
Right. It needs to have a hole at the top, but nowhere else. To get the drink out. Right. Well, here's a fun glass. And this is a fun one. I like to do these for Manhattans, too. Mm -hmm. But this is like a tall, skinny, kind of weird one. It looks like it's a big glass. Like, it seems like it holds a lot, but it isn't that big. I don't know. It, I kind of think of it in the same breath as this funny yeah, non-Nicanora one. These two serve similar functions here. And they yeah, actually, yeah, like I wouldn't put sours uh, in those. No. When you first tried making drinks, we didn't really have any appropriate glass for it. We didn't have a single double old-fashioned glass. Mm -hmm. And so what we did was we went down to, like, Fred, Fred Meyer, Meyer. And we bought four double old-fashioned glasses at Fred Meyer. Yeah. And it was, like, pretty unsatisfying. <laughs> Well, like, we fine. had them for a while. They held drinks and stuff. But so the first cocktail glasses we owned from Fred Meyer, this. They have was, like a thick base. They're, yeah. they're sort of in between like a rocks glass. And a, they're, they're a weird design that I don't. I don't but know I mean, they worked fine for a Manhattan. They worked fine for a sour. They were, they were an all purpose solution. Right. They're kind we of big. I don't like the V again. Yeah, this is no, where I developed my hate of. Yeah. The top. So they're ones. they're stable because of the nice heavy base. They do have a anyway, heavy base. So that's what we did. That was our solution. Then you started getting keeping. You started like going to thrift stores and keeping an eye out. And it right. was just like a casual thing we tried. We were at a thrift store anyway. We went to visit Stacy in mm -hmm. Arizona, that's, and that's where we found this. And it was a dollar fifty. I think it was a dollar. And it's it's really nice crystal. You can like walk around the thrift store doing Vista glasses. It's really fun. Um, and so that was like, whoa, you can get nice coops, like really nice coops for a dollar at a, a thrift store. I've never found the shape again. This is like, a, the, I've never seen one like this ever, ever again. Find. And I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah. Uh, some, so, some, some shapes you find a lot, in fact, like this tall one that I was talking about with the sours. Those come in like all kinds of different varieties. Um, some, they'll have different base, the bases will be different. Uh, sometimes they'll have this same general shape, but they have different decorations on the side. Some have more cuts, some less. So those are easy to find in your experience. Those are, I've seen these everywhere. Okay, so we had this experience at the thrift store in Tucson that was really exciting. Mm -hmm. And then you started going to thrift stores and just sort of looking around. Right. And that is where pretty much all the rest of this has come from. Correct. So how do you do it? Well, so the thing I like to find is crystal. You'll see things at the thrift, at the store sometimes labeled crystal that aren't crystal. It'll be like crystal glass, but it'll be something like this, which is not crystal. How can you tell? So there's a few ways you can tell. The first way is just by how it's decorated. Glass will be have this etching on it, like when you see these little leaves. They love leaf leaf patterns. Um, yeah, so this one's got all these flowers. This one's got this little starburst and this viney leaf pattern. All um, this bamboo stuff. Is all etched. this bamboo yeah. stuff is glass, glass, like, I guess it's, I guess etched or... Yeah. Yeah, etched, Let's I guess. Let's call it etched. Let's call it etched. It's etched like that, it's glass, because a crystal one will have these much bigger sort of carvings out of them. They won't be etched, they'll have thick... Cuts. Cuts. Yeah. You know, and that's one way to tell just from that. Other way to tell crystal is it's heavy for its size. For its size, like you look at this and you think it might weigh about the same as this, but you're like, it's like weirdly heavy. Let me let me let's see. Okay. Okay. It wasn't that noticeable. You're... Pete's really good at finding crystal, apparently. <laughs> um, okay. The the sound though, right? The sound is the fun way. So. Yeah. Um, That's we'll, the way I think I could use. So if you listen to this, let's see if we can pick this up on the microphone. It's a very clear, very pure tone that lasts a long time. Let's do some, let's do some more crystal ones. I mean, they'll have different pitches depending on how they're shaped and how big they are and all sorts of things. Okay, so those were all crystal. Amazing. Those sound great. Okay, but here... And then, like, a glass one. Like, this one's definitely glass. Oh. Like... No sustain. It doesn't... It, a little, but, like, it has kind of a clunk. It kind of clunks your ear because it isn't, like, resonating. Yeah. That's not bad. But, like, the thing is, some... 
No, they're they're dead sounding. They yeah, don't can, have the sustain. Yeah, you can. They just kind of go clunk clunk. To me, that's that's the reliable way. The weight thing yeah. wasn't working for me, but the the sound is really clear. So it can be a little deceiving because any a glass thing that's got a nice round shape, like a big mm -hmm. uh, snifter, or like a big wine glass. Okay. Well, no, this one sounds terrible, but like a big wine glass will still ring pretty good. Yeah. It's a really thin, you know, one of those giant red wine glasses sometimes mm -hmm. will still sound cool. So it can be a little bit tricky to know. Okay. The other thing about glass is it'll have a, a round base. So this is just straight, straight round. Does that make sense? It's round. It's not, there's no facets on the stem. Whereas a crystal one will have, this is like an eight sided thing. It must have to do with, I mean, what's the difference between crystal and glass I'm not, in terms of the making of it? Well, I don't really know, but... We did some research. Crystal glassware is not crystal. It's just glass with barium replacing the calcium and normal glass. These days, they don't use lead anymore because it's poisonous. But this increases the durability so you can uh, carve it more easily. And it also increases the index of refraction which gives you those beautiful little rainbows that makes it real sparkly like a diamond so that's crystal um the other way to think of, to know about crystal is if you look at it through the light it, it has like a rainbow kind of effect Prisms. when you yeah. when you when you look through it yeah it breaks the light apart in a way that glass just doesn't and that's also a little bit subtle mm -hmm. like because this this is one of our confounding ones is we think don't we think this is glass i thought it was crystal it's got the cuts like crystal and it's got it's got another feature that i find a lot only on crystal glasses which is they'll cut the bottom yeah. so the bottom will have um these little like star flower patterns i mean this has the features that we've been describing them. as crystal like this seems like maybe it's crystal but they'll also have the, the carving on the bottom of the of the base of the of the stem glass, nice. like this one. I think this one's crystal too. It looks great. It's pretty mm -hmm. heavy. It's got the carving, mm -hmm. although it does have a round stem. So hmm. that's they. You can't go. It's hard to know. You have to add up the different. Really nice. Sustain. Sounds great, and it's tiny. Yeah. Like a lot of times, a tiny glass will be harder. Yeah, that's glass. Right? Doesn't doesn't seem as good, but it's got but a it's got faceted crystal. thing. It looks like crystal. It's just not quite as. Huh. well made like this one for example you might think well this is probably crystal because it's got this faceted chunky base but it's edged but it's but it's etched but it, it sounds, sounds great. great so is it crystal i am not sure at it, the end of the day these aren't hard and fast rules you are coming you are trying to find glassware that seems like a quality piece of glassware to you it doesn't have seam lines i mean this is what i this is what i like to do i like to try and find these classy uh, crystal glasses in this style. I do also love this glass pattern with the bamboo. If you're going to the thrift store a lot, you can keep your eye peeled for the same pattern and try and collect a lot of the same pattern. That's pretty time consuming. Classic thrift store behavior. But there's a lot of like pretty cool glasses that you see at the thrift store that I never buy. Mm. Like those, um, like you'll see water glasses or Collins glasses they'll have like a gold rim mm. and they'll have like these gold like cr ancient Greek coins on them yeah. or it'll be My like grandmother had some of those or it'll be like a painting of a carriage or a bird or yeah. something there's yeah. a lot of like stuff like that that are kind of cool look like shit because someone's put them in the dishwasher and they, all of the paintings come off they they're hard to maintain if you you can't put them in the dishwasher yeah so they might have been messed up or not yeah. but like I don't know I just don't want to bother with those I mean, anyway, what, here's what it boils down to. Um, I have all these options. You don't need any, all these options. You need a double old fashioned glass because if you want to put big ice, you're going to want that. Uh, you'll want some kind of stemmed glass if you want to do like a Manhattan or something stirred. You can find just plain ones like this at the thrift store all the time for like a dollar. Um, I like to get them with the little etches or something cool on them, but. Uh, you'll need, you'll want something like that. And it's good to have a Collins glass for your tall drinks, you know, your lemonades and your, I don't know, your, your, your dark and stormies. 
But again, you could do that in a double old fashion, it would be fine. Uh, and then the rest of this is just sort of gravy. You know what I mean? Let's stop. Uh, okay, We're done. so We're done. thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions about glassware, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, and we'll see you next time. Bye.